Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 20 video. In this one, gonna be less of a guide and kind of more of a walkthrough on the prestige voucher for the Mike Trout collection. Uh, kind of what to expect, what you need to have done, what to target if you're gonna go for this prestige voucher. But if you're new to the channel, please drop a like on the video, subscribe for more MLB The Show 20 content. Would be much appreciated. So if you missed my comprehensive guide for the whole Mike Trout collection, that video is in the description below. Be sure to go check that one out. But as a refresher, there's 18 potential vouchers you can get and you need 15 of them for the Mike Trout. Um, this prestige voucher is one of the optional ones. It's a bit of an online grind. And really what it is is an opportunity cost of stubs. So grinding this prestige voucher can end up saving you some stubs. If you watched my guide, basically you can forego either the postseason, the prospects collection, or the home run derby collection. Those are the three like worst categories. So you can skip one of those by doing the prestige voucher instead. Uh, the opportunity cost of that is it'd save you about four to five hundred K stubs right now. So really it's up to you. Uh, if you want to do some online grinds to save that many stubs or if you'd rather flip and get that many stubs and do something else, totally your call. Prestige cards are also a pretty big time sink. They do take quite a while even if you hit and quit in events. Even the easy ones that I'm going to go over have like 80 hit requirements and if you hit 333 that's still 240 at bat. So it does take quite a bit. Um, although you do get a better card by the end of it. And depending on your level, you could get free prestige cards up to five, all five of them if you are 95 prestige. Um, I think the first one of these that you get is at level five prestige, which is after diamond. So depending on where your XP is at, you could have some freebies here, but I imagine most people aren't too far in the prestige XP reward path at this point. By the way, I'm on an alt account so I can show you guys the exact stats you need. My main account does have trout and a lot of prestiges, so I know someone's going to drop that comment down below. Yes, this is an alternate account. So there's basically four different ways you can approach these prestige cards, how you want to grind for them, and it's all personal preference. Uh, it's really up to you what you want to target with these prestige cards. The first one would be the cheap options, which is the one that I probably don't recommend. Uh, because these cards are such a grind online, it's probably not a good idea just to use cards that are the cheapest just because they're the cheapest. You really won't be saving that many stubs, and you're going to have to be using these cards for a lot of at-bats, multiple hundreds of at-bats. So. Uh, just going with the cheapest option, probably not the best move in my opinion. But if you were going to look at it from this perspective, obviously the four player of the month rewards, Paxton, Bellinger, Correa, and Didi are all free cards, so that is a good starting point. Uh, they cost you zero stubs. Now some of these have overlaps with the other categories later, so I'm not saying these are bad prestige grinds at all. Uh, but this is where you should start if you're looking to save as many stubs as possible. Also, if you've done the live series collections, then Mickey Mantle, Craig Biggio, and Gary Sheffield are technically already paid for or free once you get them. Uh, so these are great cards to be grinding as well that won't cost you any stubs. And also, if you've done any of the previous vouchers for the inning programs, uh, you have to lock those cards in, so that's a good place to start as well. The second way you can approach these prestige cards is through collection efficiency. So because you have to lock in these cards uh, and make them non-sellable in order for them to be prestiged, you can kind of try and double dip with some of these guys uh, while you're finishing out the other collections. So I showed it on my main account in the original Mike Trout guide, but I locked in Larry Walker. For the signature series because i'm working on his prestige and he counts for the sig series so if at any point you find yourself looking at guys for either the sig series the prime or the award set uh, that you would be willing to lock in and that also have prestige programs uh, definitely look to do that. That would be really efficient for your collections. Basically, you get to lock them in for prestige and for whatever category they're already a part of. The third way you can approach these prestige cards is looking for efficiency with time. So not all prestige programs are created equal. Some of them are much easier to do than others. For hitters, the most difficult stats to accumulate uh, in my experience have been RBIs and runs scored. And for pitchers, the hardest stat to accumulate has been strikeouts. As far as time efficiency as well, I think it's good to just avoid pitchers in general. Usually their prestige programs are just going to take longer than hitters are, especially because you can't hit and quit with them uh, in events. The obvious exceptions are the relievers. If they're event eligible, you can start them every game and then reset your run so their stamina resets. So if Mariano or Tom Hinky are event eligible at any point, those end up being pretty quick. But in general, uh, pitcher prestige programs take a long time. Some cards to target if you're looking to save on time and be more efficient. These prestige programs require very low amount of stats compared to other guys. So we're looking at Cody Bellinger, Didi Gregorius, 
uh, James Paxton, also Chipper Jones, surprisingly has a pretty easy prestige program. Jim Tomey is quick, Fred McGriff is quick, Michael Young and Joe Torre all have pretty low requirements for their prestige programs, like someone like Joe Torre's super easy program. Not a lot of RBIs or runs scored required, not a lot of extra base hits required either, and a pretty low amount of hits, 86 is not a lot of hits required. So this is what I'm really talking about when I mean time efficiency. These are the cards that are going to be able to be prestiged the fastest, uh, take the least amount of at bats or innings pitch. And the final way you can look at these prestige cards is by evaluating the most improved by being prestige. So if they hit meaningful thresholds, do they get diamond defense from gold? Uh, at their primary or secondary positions, do they hit power thresholds, stuff like that. Um, obviously Mickey Mantle, Craig Biggio, and Gary Sheffield are just good candidates in general for just getting better. Uh, by being prestige, Mantle ends up with diamond defense in center field as his prestige instead of gold, so that's really good. Um, also Jimmy Rollins, Larry Walker, Chipper Jones, Andre Dawson gets diamond defense at all. Uh, outfield positions by being prestige, Eric Davis gets up to 99 speed, and Cody Bellinger gets up to diamond defense in his secondary positions in the outfield as well. Also, as far as strictly improving as cards, uh, pitchers are actually the best for this because they not only get the plus three to their attributes like the hitters do, uh, but their pitch repertoire also improves. Their fastballs get plus one to velocity and their off speed get minus one to velocity. So pitchers actually improve a lot from being prestige and I think that's one of the reasons they made it so they take longer to prestige pitchers. Uh, but as far as like cards that improve the best, definitely look at some pitchers if you're wanting to just like have the biggest leap from non-prestige to prestige card. Overall, my advice for this voucher, pick guys that you like and that you're willing to use for a long time because like I said, these online stack grinds do take a while. Um, you definitely want to be using the prestige card after you get him, especially if you're locking in for stubs and putting in the time to get the prestige card. So take a look at five guys that maybe you would end up using for a very long time, if not in-game, guys that you really love from real life, stuff like that. That would be my best advice. But because I know you guys are going to ask, I am going to give you my top five uh, of these cards with all things considered from all four of the categories that I have discussed in the ways that you can approach looking at these prestige diamonds. These are not in any particular order either, but the first one of the five is Veteran Chipper Jones. You can double dip with him in the Veteran uh, category, which is nice. Also very easy prestige program, only 79 hits is really low. Um, not a whole lot of RBIs or runs required either. Um, possibly end game bench bat, 117 power versus left, shortstop secondary. Gets up to silver defense as a prestige at third base as well. Just a really, really solid candidate. Kind of expensive right now, but definitely one of the cards to look at as far as ease of use, um, getting these stats done, and how much he's improved by being prestige. Next is Cody Bellinger. This may be the best prestige card to do for anyone. If you are just looking to even get one prestige, I'd probably tell you to look at Cody Bellinger. The stat grind is insanely low, only 67 hits required, and as a prestige, like I said earlier, he gets up to 96 fielding, which means if you want to put him in his secondary position in the outfield, he'll stay at 91 and maintain a diamond shield out there. So just a great card, free card as well from the player of the month. This is a prime, prime card to be looking to prestige. Third is Jim Tomey, again, not a lot required of his stat grind, and Possibly an in-game bench bat with how much he crushes righties uh, as a prestige as well He gets up to 65 fielding which means at his secondary position of third base He will have bronze defense instead of common. I do think that is a big jump uh, Also, Jim Tomey is one of the best hitters. I've used all year uh, even against lefties. He was crushing the ball I found it very easy to get these stats done with Jim Tomey and at the very least you can have prestige Tomey on your bench pretty much for the rest of the year so I think he's a really good option as well. Fourth is Michael Young, yet another very easy stat grind. You don't even need more than 38 runs, RBIs, or extra base hits. Only 87 hits needed as well. This one may not excite you guys just because he's not that exciting of a card uh, necessarily but massive contact played well for me uh, as a prestige. He'll get uh, gold defense in his secondary positions and he can play anywhere in the infield except for catcher which is awesome also gets over 80 power versus right as a prestige 
and he's pretty cheap right now one of the cheaper face of the franchise options once again probably because he's not that exciting of a card but another great prestige option very easy to do you can play him all around the infield wherever you need to put him in events or whatever and not a lot of stats required and finally the fifth option this is actually a pitcher but another great great prestige program is James Paxton only 68 innings pitch and 78 strikeouts required which is much lower than any other starting pitcher prestige program in the game this card is also free because it comes from monthly awards and obviously we talked about pitchers improving their repertoire as prestiges uh, Paxton ends up hitting 100 on his forcing fastball as a prestige which is pretty cool I understand if you don't want to grind pitchers then one of the most effective ways to grind prestiges right now is to just hit and quit in events so if you aren't interested in this fifth option of a pitcher I do have some honorable mentions for you honorable mentions obviously Mickey Mantle Craig Biggio and Gary Sheffield as I have said several times must be mentioned because they're technically already free once you've acquired them so you might as well grind them they do have really long stack grinds like 188 hits with mantle is just insane but all three of the cards are probably going to be on your team in some capacity for the rest of the year so they're worth mentioning mariano rivera must be mentioned as well just because he'll probably be in most people's bullpens for the entire rest of the year also the plus three to attributes really helps relief pitchers because they get plus three stamina and relief pitchers don't have a lot of stamina to begin with so getting plus three from 34 to 37 is actually a big deal it's like five extra pitches before you get tired coming out of the bullpen which is really nice so Mo must be mentioned and as far as three more hitters that you could maybe give a look at uh, Fred McGriff very underrated card one of the best hitting cards I've used all year uh, surprised me a lot his face of the franchise card and a very easy stat grind as well for a power hitter only needing 40 RBIs and 40 runs scored it's it's just such an easy program you're pretty much gonna get everything but the hits done before you even get to 79 hits Didi Gregorius should be mentioned as well another free card from the player of the month programs uh, and a very easy stat grind as well I just didn't put him in my top five because he's only a 95 overall as a prestige he's kind of getting a little outdated just because he was the first player of the month card to come out. He's not the highest overall, but still a pretty easy prestige grind to do. And finally, mentioned it already, Joe Torre. Very easy stat grind. I actually raked with this card too. I don't know why I hit so well with him. Very well statted card. I think people kind of sleep on this card. As a prestige, he also gets to 80 reaction behind the plate. And he also is able to maintain a gold shield at his secondary positions of first base and third base. Uh, should you want to move him around the infield in that way. This card kind of felt to me like how we've always hoped Johnny Bench cards to be. <laughs> Johnny Bench cards have always not been good. Uh, this card kind of plays like how a bench card should have been. So I really liked him. Very easy stat grind. Also, catcher, pretty shallow position. Having a 99 overall prestige catcher is pretty valuable. You could probably hold down that spot for the rest of the year with this card. So that's going to wrap it up for the video. Hopefully the information was helpful for you all. Like I said, more of a walkthrough than a guide. Just wanted to dump as much information as I could on you guys uh, so you guys can go about grinding these prestige programs as efficiently as possible. Drop a comment down below. Let me know who you're targeting for your prestige programs if you're doing this voucher at all. Let me know if you already had the voucher ready to go for the Mike Trout collection. <laughs> I definitely did. So appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate the support this year. It means a lot to me. Uh, let me know if it helped. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.